Hello YouTube, Vinyl Community. Wes here checking in with my Vinyl Inbox for the month of April 2021. Hope you're all doing well, having a great day, great night, whenever it is you're watching this. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you're an old timer, thanks for coming back. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope you enjoy the show. I got a lot of stuff I found in the month of April. It was a pretty good month for thrift stores and a pretty good month for new vinyl as well. So I wanna share all that with you. Let's go ahead and get into it enjoy the show the first thing I have to share with you was actually a birthday present from my parents but I did not uh, my birthday was in March uh, but I wasn't able to uh, get this from them uh, until April not a big deal it's, it's been out for a while now but something that's been on my wish list for a while and uh, it was cool of them to get it for me and that is Sturgill Simpson's cut and grass volume one uh, so this is Sturgill Simpson doing bluegrass versions of his original songs. Uh, so all these songs I've heard before, but uh, now they're done in a bluegrass style on this album. So it's a little bit un disconcerting, I guess, or not disconcerting. It's a little bit just weird here in these songs because um, they're all songs I know, but th they're very different. The pace and the... The timing of all the songs has changed to fit more in a bluegrass style, so it's it's very much a different sound for the songs. Even you know, so there's a bit of familiarity familiarity there with those the songs, but uh, it's a little bit just weird hearing them in a different way. It's kind of when you hear a cover of something that doesn't really follow the original uh, to the T. Really, really good. Really been enjoying this. There is a volume two out now. Uh, which I would like to pick up as well. And there is a co colored version of this, which is it on yellow vinyl or green vinyl? I think it's yellow vinyl, but this is just the standard black vinyl pressing. I think the colored versions is an indie exclusive uh, only. Uh, so yeah, that's the first thing for the month of April, kind of a, a holdover from March. All right, so the second thing I have to share with you for April is a Blue Note classic series. I've been talking a lot about the getting into the Tone Poet series recently and wanted to pick up one of the classic series just to see what those were all about. Um, so I picked up a new one that was, I believe it was a, yeah, I believe this was an April uh, April release for the uh, the classic series, but I got Art Blakey's Monin classic album. I did not have this in the collection, so definitely wanted to grab this. So there is the classic series, very, very basic releases on these, thin card stock, uh, no gatefold. Um, the pressings are nicely done, I mean, the sound quality is there, these sound, sound incredible just like the uh, Tone Poets do. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is a killer set, a classic album from Art Blakey. So my thoughts on Tone Poets versus classic series. I. I was really kind of let down by this. Uh, just the tone poets are around twenty-five dollars, twenty-six dollars, somewhere in that range. These are like twenty-one, twenty-two dollars. There's not that much difference in the the price, but the it just feels like so much more of a substantial thing uh, when you're talking about a, a tone poet series. Is you're getting that tip-on jacket, you're getting that gatefold. It's like ultra gloss tip-on jacket. You're getting those extra photos in the gatefold. I think it for the you know three dollars difference, it's worth it to have a tone poet over a classic series. So I wish they would just do all tone poets. It is what it is. Just you know, records are meant to be played, and the sound quality is great on both of them. If you're just into this, just into the, the music itself, then it's no big deal. Um, I'm kind of I'm I'm into the physicality. The you know the the printing, the artwork, uh, extra photos, extra, any kind of extras. I'm, I'm into that kind of stuff. So I prefer the Tone Poets over the, the classic series for the extra $3. I'll, I'll definitely willing to pay the extra couple of dollars to get the, get all the extras that are included with the Tone Poet series. Um, but yeah, sound quality is great on both. So you can't go wrong there. It's great, great way to pick these, uh, classic, uh, Blue Note records up. Uh, but yeah, Art Blakey in the Jazz Messengers. Great set and glad to have this in the collection. 
Okay, so the next thing I have to share with you is a new album released in April and the the first 2021 album I have bought on vinyl so far. Um, I think I may have some pre-orders coming of some other ones, but this is the first thing I've bought on vinyl and all, all my 2021 albums have been purchased on CD. So I haven't really been able to talk about new music much lately until now. Uh, so this is the new one from Gre Greta Van Fleet, and this is titled The Battle at Garden's Gate. Uh, so Greta Van Fleet, a very polarizing group, um, kind of known for having very much a classic rock, sort of Led Zeppelin-esque kind of sound to it. Um, this album is no different from that. I, didn't, I hadn't really listened to Greta Van Fleet much early on. Uh, but I was in, we do our sort of general goods kind of grocery shopping at Walmart on Fridays. Um, whenever I'm in there, I like to check out the electronic section to see what new movies came out for the week. And I always walk by and browse the vinyl section there as well. And while I was standing there browsing the vinyl section, one of the employees uh, dropped a couple copies of this on the, on the stacks there. And it happened to be the Friday, I think it was April 16th. When this came out, and it was the you know it was the new release for the day, and uh, she walked over and dropped a couple of these uh, on the shelf there, and I'm like, hmm, maybe this is a sign. Maybe I should check this out. So I thought, what the heck? Went ahead and grabbed it, and uh, yeah, I'm very very happy with this. I'm I'm been enjoying listening to it. Um, I'm not totally turned off by the fact that it's very much a Zeppelin esque classic rock sort of sound. I think they do a good job with it. The singer's voice definitely was a little bit of a challenging thing for me it's kind of weird it's kind of a cross between that classic rock howl and like a mariah carey diva-esque kind of over the top kind of sound it's it's a little bit off-putting as far as the vocals uh, but the music is great i love i love the music on this and the artwork is incredible if you haven't seen the gatefold on this Check, check that out. Totally killer artwork. We'll go ahead and get to the vinyl. This is the uh, Walmart did have an exclusive on this album, which was nice. It does come with a nice large booklet with tons and tons of artwork as well as lyrics in it. Um, Each, each track has its own piece of artwork here. I'll just show a few of these here. Um, and there's a photo of the group in the back there. Uh, really nice two LP set on, I forget what they called this. They called it translucent vinyl or something. It's not necessarily clear, but it's kind of a, a you know, it's translucent plain vinyl. Uh, but yeah. Sounds really good. Been enjoying spinning this one. As I said, uh, Greta Van Fleet is a group that I hadn't listened to before. Um, pressed at MPO in France, so again, sounds really good. Nice pressing on here. And yeah, I've been enjoying, enjoying spinning this. Uh, so yeah, that's the new one from Greta Van Fleet. The first, uh, the first 2021 uh, album I have bought on vinyl. All right, the next thing I have to share with you was actually a gift from a friend of mine. Uh, he, um, his camera got uh, basically destroyed uh, by, some, by some water and uh, he was coming to visit some family of his uh, in the area, wanted to borrow one of my cameras and I said, sure. Uh, and he brought me this piece of vinyl here and this is something he pre-ordered uh, he pre-ordered. He has. He has the. There's a limited edition on colored vinyl, and this is the black vinyl version uh, that he bought for me. Uh, so this is the Mondo release of The Last of Us Part Two. It's a, a, a video game soundtrack. Uh, has alternate artwork here. It has an OB on it. So there is the. I think that's the back, and this is the front. And then on the inside, you get more nice uh, Mondo style artwork. And that one has a nice insert with liner notes and a note from the composer of the score. 
And as I said, this is the black vinyl version. I believe this is a GZ vinyl pressing. Um, yeah, it's GZ vinyl. It sounds really good, really nice cinematic, kind of has some Western themes to it, but also has just more of an action, high energy kind of scenes, sounds to it as well. As I said, I haven't played the game, so can't really speak much on on what it's about, but it's uh, the music is really good, so I've been enjoying been enjoying spinning this, and I uh, I appreciated getting this as a gift. So that was the uh, the Last of Us Part Two score soundtrack. <laughs> All right, next up, I got an online purchase. Uh, this actually came from um, Amoeba Records, and Amoeba Records is back open, uh, open at their new location now. Uh, saw that they had this one at a good price. This is something I bought on CD when it came out. Really enjoyed it. Uh, didn't buy it on vinyl because it was just kind of, it was one of those ones that was just kind of pricey and just didn't buy it at the time, but glad to finally pick it up. And that is the latest uh, full-length LP from Jewel, Picking Up the Pieces from 2015 is when this was released. Uh, awesome sort of return to form album for Jewel. If you, if you were a fan of her debut album, uh, this is going to hit hit you pretty well as as well. Really awesome uh, release from her. Uh, really great stuff. And yeah, as I said, I picked this up on CD when it came out and have uh, been enjoying it for the past six or so years. And finally glad to have it on vinyl at a good price. Uh, yeah, it definitely was a good idea to wait because this is a United pressing. So it's not the greatest pressing that's another it's a united pressing but it was super expensive it was like 35 or 40 dollars when it came out no that's not acceptable for a united pressing and it's not even a gatefold or anything another photo of her and then some lyrics on it and then on the inside it's sort of a a uh, poster with some poetry on it of hers 2LP on black vinyl, as I said, a United pressing, so it's it's just sort of mediocre. It's not horrible, it's not great either. <laughs> it's kind of a typical United pressing. Okay, so the next two albums are kind of related. I Speaking of 2021 albums, I bought Lana Del Rey's new album, uh, Chemtrails Over the Country Club, on CD been really enjoying it. I really hadn't spent much time listening to Lana Del Rey in the past, even though she's kind of in my wheelhouse. For whatever reason, I just sort of, eh, you know, kind of never really got into checking her stuff out. But uh, yeah, bought that Chemtrails Over the Country Club album. I absolutely love that album. So that's gotten me kind of going back and looking into Lana Del Rey's catalog some more. Uh, so I picked up her first two albums. Um, one of them is kind of an EP, uh, but we got uh, Born to Die. Pick that one up. I think this is her debut. Photo lyrics. And that's on black vinyl. This is a GZ pressing. Uh, so it sounds pretty good. It's nice. Uh, so that's Born to Die. And then the second one, which is more of an EP, uh, this is Paradise. 2012 as well. There's the insert with some lyrics on it. That one is black vinyl, GZ pressing as well. I know there are colored versions of these and stuff. Lots of different pressings. This is one that's just been, been in print ever since it came out, pretty much. Very, very popular artist and uh, very, definitely very popular for vinyl collectors. Uh, but yeah, cool to sort of finally go back and get into some Lana Del Rey and I'm looking forward to uh, picking up some more. So I picked up these first two on vinyl this month. All right, next thing I have to share with you, staying in that sort of female pop vocalist kind of realm. Uh, this is one's been on my wish list for a while. Finally broke down and hit the buy button on it. This is Tove Lowe's Sunshine Kitty from 2019. Um, yeah, just again, excellent female pop vocalist really enjoy listening to her stuff I don't know what it is it's, it's something I've been noticing it's like when when a guy writes a breakup album it's always really mopey and just disgustingly mopey 
and I, I can't stand a mopey album and it's like when I when men write breakup albums they're always mopey and when women write breakup albums it's very much in your face like f you I didn't love you anyway kind of thing and very just I, I like that style of a breakup album better and this is kind of a breakup album uh, definitely has a lot of those kind of themes to it and I yeah I love I love that <laughs> love that kind of a breakup album better uh, pretty comedic gatefold there uh, this has a lyric poster two-sided lyric poster uh, very nice that that's included and then the uh, actual record sleeve has liner notes on it and then this has a very bright yellow colored vinyl pressing this is basically the standard pressing is the yellow color there's some alternate i think there's a clear version that's like an urban outfitters exclusive or something uh, but yeah the yellow is the standard standard color on this release um, but yeah tove Lo from 2019 sunshine kitty always enjoy picking her stuff up and uh, added that one to the collection Okay, and then all the rest I have to share with you are all thrift store finds. A couple, I think three different thrift stores here. The first couple are from the hospice thrift store. Uh, the first one I got here is from the Parachute Club. This one's titled At the Feet of the Moon. Uh, total blind buy for me. Just had, a, had an interesting look to it. It is actually still sealed, which is neat. So I look forward to... Uh, checking that one out as you see it's still sealed so i have not listened to this yet um, i did sample it a bit online it's sort of an 80s uh an 80s pop pop kind of thing um yeah i should i should enjoy this quite well so that was a nice pickup uh beverly hills cop soundtrack And some of these thrift store finds are just stuff that's intended to go in my Discog store. If you want to check out my Discog store, I'll have a link in the show notes below. Yeah, some of this stuff I keep, some of it I put in the Discog store. Um, this is a sealed copy of The Incredible Year, so from, believe, from 69 or 68. So it's talking about the presidential campaign, um, the Apollo 8 mission bunch of other stuff that happened in that year and uh, that one's still sealed as well uh, McGuinn Clark and Hillman a bit of piano jazz that looked interesting Donald Lambert Harlem Street Classics that's more jazz here Maynard Ferguson MF Horn 2 Look, interesting looking cover Cat Stevens, Buddha and the Chocolate Box. Cool gatefold on that one. Uh, this was a neat find. The Car Wash soundtrack. Just got uh, Car Wash, I Want to Get Next to You. Uh, Rose Royce tracks there. photos from the film that was a nice find I found a copy of Iron Butterflies Metamorphosis classic one from them uh, the Miami Vice soundtrack uh, I picked up a couple of the uh, Mannheim Steamroller Christmas albums and found this one it has more of a uh, I don't know, spring or summertime kind of vibe to it. This is Fresh Air by Mannheim Steamroller. Thought I would just check it out, see what it's all about. Pick that one up. I'm always on the lookout for clean Gordon Lightfoot albums. And this was a nice one. This is his album Sundown from 74. 74 is the year on that one. Uh, the title track, uh, Sundown, is on here. Uh, Circle of Steel is on here. Too Late for Praying. Uh, some good stuff on there always like my female country artists and got a loretta lynn here god bless america again hadn't seen that one before so that was a nice find uh, here's a cool one a test record by project three in popular science uh, 
Uh, always on the lookout for Mercury Living Presence releases, and I think this is one of the more popular ones, one of the more well-known ones. Uh, 1812 Overture. Yeah, definitely glad to have found this one. Nice to uh, nice to pick that one up. And here is a London Phase Four release, the Fantastic Guitars, uh, the the Fantastic Sounds of Guitars Unlimited. So some lounge lounge remakes stuff here. Always nice packaging and uh, yeah, House of the Rising Sun, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Obladi, oh, uh, Raindrops f Keep Falling on My Head, Whiter Shade of Pale. Uh, yeah, nice. Nice renditions of those lounge versions of those songs. Pretty cool. Uh, here's one I used to pick, used to pass up all the time, but don't anymore. This is uh, uh, Christopher Cross. Uh, I guess it's self-titled album. This one has, of course, "Sailing" on it. "Ride Like the Wind." Probably some other songs on here I would recognize, but yeah, classic in that yacht rock kind of genre. I got one from Command here. This one is Bongos. Should be pretty rhythmic sounding. Uh, here's one that's a favorite of mine just because it's a place I go to often. It's where the Florida Folk Festival happens. Um, and this is the Stephen Foster Curlin. Uh, so yeah, Stephen Foster State Park in White Springs, Florida is where the Florida Folk Festival happens and they have this Kirill in there and it's uh, it's still there. And uh, anytime I see this release, I always like to pick it up. It's a fun one to have uh, to show people, give to people, whatever. Uh, this one looked pretty neat. I thought it might be something rare, but it turns out it's not. But it's got a it's got a cool cover, so you can't can't pass that up. Uh, Eddie Dean with the Golden Cowboy. That's just a cool cover. I love I love the cover on that. It's on Crown Records. Uh, next thing, we've got the the best of the fifty guitars of Tommy Garrett. So Tommy Garrett's fifty guitars: um, La Bamba, Girl from Ipanema, Spanish Eyes, Guantanamera, Mexican Hat Dance, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Malaguena. Yeah, just some nice sort of loungy guitar stuff here. And last but not least, we got one from Loretta Lynn here. This is Entertainer of the Year featuring Rated X. <laughs> uh, yeah, good one from Loretta Lynn. I've enjoyed listening to this one and you know, always always keep an eye out for female country, country stuff, what I like to collect in the country genre. Um, so that is does it for my April 2021 vinyl finds. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. If you made it to the end, you're awesome. Leave me a thumbs up. Leave me any comments you have down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, great night. Remember, there is no bad music, only music you don't like. And we'll see you again next time. Cheers.